Solving the heat or diffusion equation u sub t equal du x x. This is uh, part four uh, of a series of videos on the heat and diffusion equation. And in here, I'm going to talk about two examples, a Dirichlet boundary condition case and a Neumann boundary condition case, both non-homogeneous. Okay, so uh, here I've got a couple examples worked out. Here is, um, here is the solution to the um, heat equation with an initial condition of zero everywhere with boundary conditions two and five. That's the value Dirichlet boundary conditions, two and five. So the first thing we do is we calculate the steady state, Ax plus B. We know that USS at zero has to be two, so the B value has to be two. And the USS at 3, that's going to be 3A plus 2. That's got to be equal to 5 according to the boundary condition. So A has to be equal to 1. So we now know that the steady state has to be X plus 2. And now the general form of the solution, because it's a Dirichlet boundary condition, it'll be the steady state X plus 2 plus a sine series. Now, when we plug in the initial condition, we plug in a 0 here. The exponential here disappears, or at least it becomes 1, and so we're left with x plus 2 plus this whole sine series has to be equal to 0. And the question is, how do we choose the b values here so that this sum is correct? Well, if we swing the x plus 2 over to the other side, then we see that we want to have this sum of sines equal to minus x minus 2 on 0, 3. Okay, so we, as we have before, we extend minus x minus 2, which is negative the steady state, as odd about x equals 0, and then periodic with period 6 everywhere else. And that means we take this uh, minus x minus 2 function from 0 to 3. We extend it as odd, meaning we rotate it up to here, and then paste that over and over, and then the Bn's will be determined by this convenient simplified formula, which is twice 1 over 3 integral from 0 to 3 of minus x minus 2 multiplied by the sine functions. And if you go through and calculate that, do the integrals, it's a little bit of integration by parts, you get that for n odd, we have one formula, and for n even, we end up with zeros. And in the end, we can write down the overall solution is going to be x plus 2, plus, now this is an awkward notation here, the sum from n equal 1 to infinity, but only odd values of n, of bn e to the minus uh, n squared pi squared over 9 4 t sine n pi x over 3. And the formula for these bn's, well, we didn't have to specify n odd, but if we include the even ones, it doesn't change anything. So we could write this formula right here if we specify n must be odd. Or we can run through just the odd values, meaning we can take k going from 1 to infinity and replace every appearance of n here, here, and here with a 2k minus 1. And that gets rid of those extra zero terms that we didn't need to include in the sum, um, but it does make the formula a little bit uglier. And this is just a check. So that gives us uh, an example of the diffusion equation with a non-homogeneous Dirichlet boundary condition. Here's an example of the diffusion equation with a non-homogeneous boundary condition um, where we're specifying the slope at the end. So this is a Neumann, a non-homogeneous Neumann boundary condition. So as with the Dirichlet case, the first step is to calculate the steady state. And with Neumann, as I described earlier, this is a little bit more complicated. Um, so if you take a derivative of this expression here, you get just a, the slope. And that has to be equal to 4, as dictated by the boundary conditions. And so the tricky part, though, is to calculate b. Now remember that the flux at either end has to be equal. So that means that the total amount of mass inside the domain between 0 and 1 is constant in time. So if we calculate the integral at any moment in time, it should be a constant. 
the initial mass is given by the integral of the initial condition, which in this case was 6x. So we integrate 6x down here. And there we get 3x squared evaluated from 0 to 1. And that gives us 3. But on the other side, we have the mass at steady state. So we plug in 4x plus b for the mass at steady state, integrate that, and we get 2x squared plus bx all evaluated from 0 to 1. The 0 evaluation comes out to 0, so we just put in the 1, and we get 2 plus b. Now, the mass before had to be 3. The mass after, or at the end, after a long period of time, is 2 plus b, so b must be equal to 1. So we now know that the steady state is uh, 4x plus 1. Okay, so that's what we have up here. And what do we do with that? We put that into a sum for our overall general solution. So we get the steady state plus, now because we're dealing with Neumann boundary conditions now, we want to use the cosine functions. And in this case, L is 1, so it's cosine of n pi x. Okay, so uh, to determine the ANs, we, as always, we evaluate a t equals zero, and then we're looking for the ANs that ensure that the Fourier sum, the sum of all of these cosine terms, comes out to 2x minus one, which we got when we brought the 4x plus one over to the other side and subtracted it off the 6x. So how do we build the Fourier series that has no sine terms? Well, as before, we take our original function 2x minus 1, and we extend it this time as an even function because that ensures that we only end up with cosines, that the sine coefficients, bn, will all end up being 0. And then we you know, periodically copy this over uh, so we have a periodic function, and that's the function whose Fourier series we're looking for. So the Fourier, the, the, the coefficients, the formula for the coefficients in that case the a n are given by the integral, well, twice the integral from 0 to 1 of 2x minus 1, which is the difference between the initial condition and the steady state. So it was u of x 0 minus u s s. That's where we got this 2x minus 1. And so that goes into the calculation of the ANs, and we get this formula down here for the ANs. Um, and the A0, so you'll notice I actually have a, a slightly unusual form here. I've written down the constant term as A0 divided by 2. The only reason for doing that is it makes the formula for A0 a little bit simpler. It looks exactly like the formula for AN, the 1 over 2 that would normally be out in front here has been built into the coefficient here. Okay, so the a0 came out to, um, to be zero um, exactly because we subtracted off the steady state. And what do I mean by that? Well, the a0 in the general formula up here, I, it looked like I was including it here, but I'd already included a constant term. So this one actually accounted for that constant term. So it shouldn't be surprising that we got a0 as a zero because we already have a constant term from the steady state. And uh, the other comment here on the side here is that uh, the ANs are zero for n even, again, as we had in the previous example, um, because the function 2x minus one happens to be odd about the midpoint of the domain zero to one. Okay, so the last page here that's off the end, I'll bring it on here, is the overall now final summary of the whole solution. So we have u of x of t is equal to the steady state, which we calculated using um, a conservation of mass principle, plus a series of cosine terms with coefficients that are given by this expression.